I'm Jim. We're going to work on cylinders, tappet blocks, pistons, and lifters for Norton Race Engine. <laughs> We're going to use lightweight lifters and bronze tappet blocks and the set screw to keep the tappet block from moving up and down. This is a 1 8 inch diameter steel rod sharpened to a point. Take a square, set it on the cylinder base, line it up with a point, and scribe a line on the cylinder base. You want your center punch to be right in the middle, equidistant between top and bottom of the cylinder base. So you can drill a hole and thread it for the set screw. Use a block of wood to level out the cylinders. Drill into your center punch, starting with a small drill bit about an eighth of an inch in diameter. The holes are drilled and are ready to tap. Here's a cheap trick you can use to keep the thread straight. Take a drill chuck, mount it to a shaft, insert your tap and tighten it up. Put it in the drill press, but not too tight. Just got to slide up and down and turn. Start the threads by hand as far as you can. Then remove the tap and finish with a tapping wrench. In my last video, Norton Race Engine Build Lower End, I showed you how to adjust the height of the tappet block. Here's another way to do it. Install the tappet block, the lifter separator tab, and just one of the screws furthest away from the tappet block. Then push the tappet block up so it protrudes about an eighth of an inch here from the cylinders. Tighten up the set screw just enough to where it holds the tablet block to keep it from falling up and down on its own, but not too tightly. Then set the cylinders under the cases. Make sure to push down all the way. Spin the cam so it pushes the tablet block upward. Remove the cylinders and measure the amount that the tappet block protrudes from the cylinders. These protrude about a tenth of an inch. We need 50 thousandths clearance. So, I'm going to push the tappet block down about 50 thousandths. This is kind of tricky. I'm measuring with a dial indicator right at the edge of the tappet block. When you're satisfied you have 50 thousandths clearance, tighten up the set screw enough till it leaves a mark on the tappet block. This is the mark we made with the conical point set screw. You want to make sure you mark these tappet blocks left and right so you don't mix them up. Center punch your mark. Start with a small drill bit, 1 16th to 8th inch. I have a piece of tape here to mark the depth. 3 sixteenths of an inch deep because we want it to be a little deeper than the quarter inch diameter drill we're going to use next. That way the conical point on the Allen screw has somewhere to go and it won't bottom out. Now go in with a quarter inch drill bit. One eighth inch depth from the very tip. I've marked it with a piece of tape or you can use a little bit of paint. If the tappet block protrudes too much, you can always grind it down a little bit on a belt sander. Generally speaking, this corner of the tappet block should protrude about a 32nd of an inch. Install the lifter tabs, the screws, and the tie wire. Then put a drop of Loctite right here on the end of the lifter tab. That way, the tappet block won't fall out of place if you have to remove and replace the set screw for some reason. Be sure to put Loctite on the threads of the set screw so it won't leak or come loose. The tappet blocks are in place. Install the tappets with a chamfered corner to the outside. Use pieces of quarter inch rubber tubing that press over the ends of the tappets. Use a needle nose pliers to push the rubber tubing over the end of the tappet. This will hold the tappet in place while you assemble the motor.
then you can remove the rubber tubing before you install the push rods. Reverse this process when you disassemble. We're ready to install the pistons. Start by inserting the circlips on the inside of each piston. Install one end of the circlip into the groove and overlap this notch about an eighth of an inch with the other end. Hold it down with your finger so it doesn't fly off in outer space. Then use a small screwdriver in the notch and lever it into place. Install the rings and locate the ring gaps according to the diagram in the instructions. Stuff a rag into the cases in case you drop a circlip. Lubricate the upper ends of the rods. Slide in the wrist pins and add the missing circlips. Cut a piece of plywood to these dimensions. Put on some ring clamps. Make sure the cam lobes are lubed. And smear some Permatex Moto Seal 1 or Right Stuff Sealer on the cases all around and on the bottom of the cylinder base. We're just about ready to install the cylinders. These cylinder bolts have been machined and triangulated along the length so the cross section is reduced. That allows them to stretch along with the cylinders when the aluminum expands. Bring the cylinders down onto the pistons. Make sure there's no gap between the ring clamp and the lower sleeve. Then work the cylinders down slowly and evenly. Checking as you go to make sure the rings don't slip out of the ring clamps. Once you've got the cylinders all the way down and the ring clamps are against the wood, leave the wood in place while you remove the ring clamps. That way nothing will fall into the cases. The ring clamps are removed. We're going to bring the cylinders down a little further. Then remove the piece of wood. Now you want to bring the cylinders down over the bolts, but not all the way, or you won't be able to get them started. Install the bolts, tighten everything down, and don't forget to remove the rubber tubing from the tappets. Install the timing gear before you bolt on the head. That way the valves won't bang into the pistons. When you adjust the chain tension, Spin the motor all the way around, checking for tight spots. If you're going to time the cam, you might as well wait before you tighten up the nut because you're going to have to remove and change the Woodruff key. Squirt some oil down into the lifters. Ready to put on the head.